सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द वी एल एस आई प्रोटोकॉल्स हैव यू एवर वंडर हाउ ऑल द डिफरेंट पार्ट इन साइड योर स्मार्टफोन योर कॉम्प्यूटर और इवन योर स्मार्ट होम डिवाइसेज टॉक टू ईच अदर इट्स नॉट अ मेजिक इट्स ऑल थैंक्स टू समथिंग कॉल्ड प्रोटोकॉल स्पेशली इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ वी एल एस आई सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द इम्पोर्टेंट प्रोटोकॉल विच वॉज रिक्वायर्ड टू गेट इन टू द वी एल एस आई इंडस्ट्री सो माई नेम इज किट्टू पटेल एंड दिस इज माई कॉन्टेक्ट नंबर सो इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट सो यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट मी ऑन दिस नंबर और यू कैन ऑल्सो ड्रॉप अ मेल सो दैट वी कैन रिजोल्व योर क्वेरी ओके एंड ऑल्सो आई हैव मैंशन माई ऑल सोशल मीडिया हैंडल्स इन डिस्क्रिप्शन सो यू कैन कनेक्ट विथ मी फ्रॉम देयर ऑल्सो ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो सो वाई प्रोटोकॉल्स आर एजेंसियल इन वी एल एस आई सो वॉट एक्जैक्टली आर वी एल एस आई प्रोटोकॉल सो थिंक ऑफ देम एज द कॉम्युनिकेशन लैंग्वेज दैट अलाउ डिफरेंट कॉम्पोनेंट ऑन अ चीप और इवन बिटवीन द चीप्स टू अंडरस्टैंड ईच अदर इमेजिन ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड अ सिटी वेर एवरी वन स्पीक्स ए डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज सो प्योर क्यूर्स राइट सो प्रोटोकॉल्स ब्रिंग ऑर्डर टू दैट क्यूर्स विद इन अ चीप्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस लैंग्वेज इज एब्सोल्युटली फंडामेंटल If you are involved in designing, verifying, or even debugging this complex system, they are truly the backbone of any system on chip, or you can say SOC. Now let's see the basic level protocols which was required. Okay, so first one is your APB, Advanced Peripheral Bus. So let's start with the basics. These are the foundational protocols, the building blocks. First up, we have APB, which stands for Advanced Peripheral Bus. Its main purpose is to provide a simple low interface for connecting peripheral devices things like timers gpios and you can say the some and you can say simple controllers to the main system on chip bus okay so think of it as a quite efficient side road for less demanding traffic now what make it basic so well it is non pipeline meaning it handle one transaction at a time it also a single master so only one component can control the bus at a given time and it uses some very simple control signal like you can see setup enable write so it's also straight forward timing makes it easy so it's also straight forward so which make it easy to implement in rtl we describe digital circuit and it's crucial for integrating thus basic peripheral okay now let's see the another one so another basic protocol is I2C. So the key characteristic of I2C. Let's see. So this is a two-wire serial communication protocol. Serial means here you are sending the data one bit at a time, like cars going through a single lane tunnel. Okay. So you will often find I2C connecting low-speed peripheral like EPROMs, and you can say we store some small amount of data sensors or some real-time clock. Okay. So it's a key characteristic. So its key characteristic include a master slave architecture where one of your device control the communication and it uses only two line SDA for data and SCL for the clock it is basic because see it minimal pin count it's widely used in embedded system and its serial data transfer is relatively easy okay so it's great for the simplicity and saving pin now let's learn the intermediate level protocols and you can say let's discuss on intermediate level protocol now now let's set up a label to our intermediate protocols so these are more complex designed for higher performance needs the first one here is ahp you can say the advanced high performance bus unlike your apb your ahp is built for speed here its purpose is to act as a high performance system okay so it connecting with a high speed modules like you can say your cpu dms and which handles direct access memory and memory controllers within the socs so think of hp as a multi lane highway for heavy traffic now what make it intermediate so it is pipeline meaning it can process multiple operation concurrently improve its efficiency so it support multiple masters so several components can request to control of the bus so it also handle bus transfer sending large block of data efficiently and addressing complex arbitration so which decide which master get to use the bus when multiple want it so its state machine and timing are more complex than apb but it is absolutely fundamental for any cpu centric soc design okay now let's see the another one so next up is spi the serial peripheral interface so 
दिस इज अनदर सीरियल कम्युनिकेशन प्रोटोकॉल बट इट्स एन फुल डुप्लेक्स मीनिंग योर डेटा कैन बी सेंट एंड रिसीव साइमल्टेनियसली इट इज ऑल्सो सिंक्रोनस यूज ए शेयर्ड क्लॉक सिग्नल एंड इज ऑल्सो डिजाइन फॉर रेपिड डेटा एक्सचेंज बिटवीन योर माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एंड पेरीफेरल्स नाउ योर एस पी आई यूजेस फोर वायर्स वन इज एस क्लॉक फॉर द क्लॉक एंड अनदर वन इज मोसी मास्टर ऑफ स्लेव इन फॉर डेटा फ्रॉम मास्टर टू स्लेव ओके नाउ द थर्ड वन इज मिसो मास्टर इन स्लेब आउट फॉर डेटा फ्रॉम स्लेब टू मास्टर एंड द लास्ट वन वॉज स्लेब सिलेक्ट to choose which slave device you are talking to now it's faster than your i2c and it's commonly used for flash memory displays and adc which is called analog to digital converters so your mastering spi requires a solid grasp of synchronous data transfer now let's see some another intermediate level protocols so finally for our intermediate level we have uart the universal asynchronous receiver transfer this is this is an asynchronous serial communication protocol which was primarily used for point to point data exchange so you will often find you want to use for debugging sending simple commands or console interface okay so what make it unique so it only used two wires transmitting and receiving okay so crucially there is no clock signal shared between the devices instead both side agree upon a watt rate which is the which is the speed of data transfer and use start and stop bits to synchronize the data so understanding asynchronous timing and how to generate the correct baud rate is the key step and it is essential for a wide range of peripheral communications protocols okay so now let's see some advanced level protocol now we are entering the big leagues advanced level protocols so these are the industry standard for high speed complex system leading the pack is axi so the advanced extensible interface so your axi is a high performance high bandwidth memory mapped interface standard absolutely central to modern arm based socs so if you have got an arm processor so chances are there it's an axi is the primary language it's speaking so your axi characteristics are significantly more complex it has some multiple channels for read address read data write address write data and write responses so it support out of order transaction meaning your operation don't have to complete in the exact sequence okay so they were issued and multiple outstanding transaction where many request can be pending at once so all of this involve complex handshaking to ensure your data integrity so axi is the go to protocol for integrating high performance intellectual property blocks or you can say ip and it also require a deep understanding of pipelining concurrency and you can say complex transaction ordering so it is absolutely critical for verification roles in vlsi now let's see the another one so the another one is ethernet so finally we have ethernet while you might think of it for connecting your computer to the internet it is also a crucial advanced protocol within a vlsi for connecting devices in a system or over a network so it is widely used in networking protocol for wired local area networks or lanes you can say so your ethernet define both the physical layer how signals are transmitted and the data link layer how data is framed and addressed okay so it support various speed from 10 mbps all the way up to 400 gbps and beyond you can say so it also has a specific frame structure for data packets and you can say while older versions used a collision detection modern ethernet is typically full duplex so implementing ethernet in vlsi involved a complex mac you can say media access control and physical layer design so it is crucial for network on chip design or communication interface on high end device and require understanding of networking stacks so why should we learn this protocol so let discuss this so why bother learning all this different communication language so well so there are several compelling reason first of all your industry relevance this protocol are widely adopted by pretty much every semiconductor industry out there so they are the lingual franca of chip design now job readiness so whether you are aiming for the role in vlsi design or verification or even in physical design the knowledge is absolutely essential it make you highly valuable in job market also problem solving when things goes wrong on a complex chip and they sometime do mastering this protocol will be your super power for debugging the tricky soc issues now career growth 
to seriously mastering advanced protocols open the doors to high impact project and more senior roles now it's so you can handle the most complex challenges in chip development now this is all for our today video if you have found this video useful so do like this video and also subscribe this channel and if you want any of the protocol to learn from us so to mention that protocol in comment we will definitely try to make a comprehensive video on that okay thank you